Tranky, tranky, cobra. Oh! Uy! Naya Kukia. Nice, nice. Big, beautiful rattlesnake. Ooh, she is a beast. What's going on, my ghouls and goblins? What's going on, beautiful people? I got a little promo for you guys. We got the Scales Expo coming up at the West Palm Beach Fairgrounds. My good friend Ryan is throwing this event. It's gonna be the first Scales Expo. It's a giant reptile expo. I'm gonna be hanging out there. Stone's gonna be hanging out there. Ryan's gonna be hanging out there. Primitive Predators, Paul Cafaro, and a whole bunch of vendors that are gonna be having cool reptiles on display. Uh, nothing venomous like this beautiful Gila Monster, my sweet boy but in the Halloween spirit, because it's going to be the 21st and 22nd, a Saturday and a Sunday. We're all going to be hanging out. Come in a Halloween costume if you want. Either way, I'm going to be out there hanging out both days, so come out to the Scales Expo event. It's going to be good. Here's the information right here. It's kind of hard to snap with the missing finger, but I don't want to make it vibrate. The phone hurts. Right there. Woo! I'll see you guys at the event. Maybe I'll have a crocodile with me from the show. Maybe, maybe Anakin, maybe some gators. I don't know. You gotta have to come and find out. I'll see you guys there. I love you and enjoy the episode. Ooh, what's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out with all the baby monocled covers that we hatched out a couple months back. This is old Big Bertha's babies and Sunshine, the albino monocled cobra. They're all looking good. We just cleaned out all their little containers that we're keeping them in in this cage right here, and we rehomed. Uh, let's see. We gave one to Stone, uh, one to Justin Galata. And we gave one to my good friend, Andrew. So now we have about 17 left because two of them did pass away out of the 21 I originally had. And I'm gonna keep one for myself. But I separate all these babies because we're gonna rehome them to my buddy Ryan and we wanna soak them. So what we're gonna do is give this little baby cobra a little bath. Look at these guys, get a good look at from the top. Look at these hoods. Look at this guy right here. Some of them have like beige hoods. You can see this guy's got like a beautiful beige looking hood. Look at that. Woo! Hello, little buttercup. How are you doing? Hello. Ooh, ooh. All these beautiful little cobras. And all of them came out gorgeous. Some are like jet black. Some of them have beige with bands. Some of them have gold speckling on their backs. They're all gorgeous looking animals. And they're going to be rehomed to people who are responsible venomous keepers with permits. So for right now, we're going to let them soak. And then we're going to put them back in their containers later. And we're just going to clean up a bunch of venomous snakes today. Today's going to be a snake tactic. We're going to be taking care of all the different venomous reptiles in here. Monocled Cobras. Uh, we're gonna be taking care of the beautiful Black Mamba, Allison, getting everyone nice and situated. But these guys are just gonna enjoy a nice little bath. Look how cute these guys are. Going for a little float. Just a little, little Cobra float right here. Look how cute. And of course, these guys are super toxic snakes. Being Monocled Cobras, they are one of the most toxic drop for drop Cobras out there because they are a true Cobra and their neurotoxic capabilities are way more potent than something of a king cobra, which isn't really a true cobra at all. It's a different species, different family. You gonna hood up? Oh, 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 little defensive. Oh, hello, little buttercup. Hello, hello. Whoa! Cranky, cranky cobra. That's a hot, oh! That's a hot tub. That's a hot tub right that there. That's a hot tub. That's a real hot tub. They're so cool. At this size, they're gonna be in little frogs and geckos. And if they happen to come upon like a little rat nest, they might eat some pinkies. But usually at this size, they're eating amphibians and reptiles, babies on the wild. And then sometimes other snakes, even worms, even insects sometimes, baby snakes will eat. So we're gonna secure this. Just put a little lock top on this. It's labeled, good to go. We're gonna take all these cute little babies. Oh, 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 no, oh, oh, tsunami. Look at that. That is so cool. We're gonna put these baby covers right here. Let them soak for a while. Let's start taking care of the most dangerous snakes all around the world. Let's go. All right, so this is the one cobra that I decided I wanted to keep because he's got a really cool looking pattern. Ooh, and he huds up really nice. And I love snakes that perform like this. Really good show snakes. Uh, I, I don't like cobras that act too chill. I like for the cobras to act like cobras. And you can see his hood is very unique. It's got a very strange monocle on the back that breaks up with almost a striping. And you can see he's got nice bands. And he's got speckling of gold. He's a good looking snake. And I don't know uh, what sex he is. We'll find out as he gets bigger, but you can see he's got lots of charisma. They all eat good. And I decided that he's gonna be staying with us. So in the future, if he ends up being a male, which is what I'm hoping for by the looks of that tail, 
the thickness of it. Maybe he might be a male, we'll see. And uh, Pearl, the leucistic monocled cobra that Tyler gave me as a gift, is a female. So if this guy ends up being a male for sure, then we'll put them together and see what kind of babies we get. And that'd be awesome. Woo. Beautiful snake. Got this uh, little setup ready to go. Just want to get that little bit of aspen off because it's a little wet. There we go. Now you got this whole new clean enclosure. And he'll only be in here for a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to get some more enclosure set up. So once he gets a little bit bigger, he'll have a nice big space. But we're going to put him back into the baby area. And right here in the baby area, we've got this gorgeous eyelash viper. So I ended up giving uh, Tyler his half of the babies because he owns the male that produced all those baby eyelash vipers. And then I rehomed all of the babies except for one. So I decided to keep one beautiful golden eyelash viper. How cool is that? This guy's smashing anole lizards and soon enough when he's big enough, he'll be eating pinkies. And that's what I did with his mom when she was a baby, raising her up. Uh, I actually have to clean his water. So let's do this. Let's get him out just like that. You can see he's got a big belly full of anole. Beautiful little snake. And these guys come from Costa Rica throughout Central America. And they typically eat like frogs and anoles. So it's good to start them off on what they get naturally. It's the easiest way to go about it. I'm gonna rinse out his dish and I'll be right back. All right, so we're just gonna put some water at the bottom. This is a little style that Ryan Grantney does for his little boreal vipers. And this is how he set them up for me when I was recovering from that brain bleed after all the craziness from my snake bite. But you can see this eyelash viper is doing great. I'm just out of the strike range, so I'm, I gotta be careful. If I go any closer, I am right in the range of getting bit. And these guys will bite. Uh, their venom will not kill you. If uh, you're not allergic, the most that's gonna happen is it's gonna rot an appendage if you get bit on the finger. It's gonna be nasty. So it's kind of like a pygmy rattlesnake bite. And depending on what type of range we're talking about, toxicity levels change with a lot of different species. So it looks like we're good to go. I just wanna push this wire down a little bit. And we're gonna put this eyelash viper back. Wee little baby. And then as he gets a little bit bigger, he'll get a nice exoterra. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two different eyelash viper setups with different bloodlines and then get all the crazy colors like red and pink and different kinds of orange and yellows. And we'll be breeding eyelash vipers because that's just the coolest thing ever. One of the OG venomous reptiles to close it up. We're gonna let these guys sit in that enclosure until they're big enough for their own stuff. We got all the little baby covers soaking. They're good to go in this nice lock top enclosure. And now, the potential future girlfriend for the monocled cobra we're gonna keep from Big Bertha's group. And this snake is no joke. She's just cranky. She's, she's like Justina or Skittles the Ethiopian cobra. She just never chills out. And that's okay. I like the snake stack like how they would act in the wild so it keeps you on guard. Pearl. Hello, Pearl. Are you sleeping? Hello, Pearl. Okay, Pearl. Come on. Come on. Oi. Come on, Pearl. Come on. There we go. Woo Look at that beautiful leucistic monocle cobra. Where are you going? Where are you going, Pearl? Where are you going? Uh oh. Relax. Beautiful animal. And she's getting bigger and bigger. Look at that gorgeous pattern and almost transparent looking hood. We can almost see through it. And you can see her veins and arteries. How cool is that? She's no joke. She's a beast of a cobra. And this is the same species as all those other ones you just saw. Nyakuthia or Najakuthia, monocled cobra. You just can't see that monocled because it's a leucistic. Look at that beautiful snake. Love this girl. Awesome gift from Tyler Nolan. All right, in you go, Cranky. You gotta clean your enclosure. There we go. Ooh. And awesome Midwest Tongs hooks. Thank you, Midwest Tongs, for hooking me up with these nice little brands, these little engravings. Chandler's Wildlife, follow your dreams. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's clean some dookie hmm. with this hand. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get her some fresh water. You can see that she's been shedding, so she's grown like crazy. She's shed so many times in the past couple months. So she's on a good rate of growth. Uh, but we're going to have to bump her out soon. She's outgrowing this enclosure. Everyone's outgrowing in their enclosures, and it's going to be cool because... First, we're gonna be dealing with the crocodilians. We're bumping them all out into their own outdoor exhibits that are water in the ground, grass all around, trees and bushes, and oh, it's gonna be so good. And all the snakes, little by little, we're gonna get all these snakes nice big setups because everyone's getting big. They're all growing like crazy. I'm gonna clean this all up and I'll see you guys in a split. <laughs> I'm wearing my stretchy pants. Don't do this in the CWL shorts. They'll, they'll snap right where your crotch is. Ow! <laughs>
All right, we got the enclosure nice and clean. We're gonna put this little Lucy there. You are so cranky. Do you ever have a day where you just wanna chill and listen to jazz music? No, okay. Snake jazz, what about that? Okay, I guess not. She's still beautiful over there. She just doesn't like to get messed up. Right back in your enclosure, you got some fresh water. Good to go. Use that nice hook to close it up. Oh, we got some stuff in the track. Let's actually pick that out. That's in the way. There we go. Make sure it's nice and secure. Get a lock on it. Boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. This is like one of the only monocled Cobras that I've ever handled that's actually flung venom. So they don't spit venom. They don't have the modified holes like a spitting Cobra, but they can actually strike and fling their venom out while they're stressing on those venom glands, kind of like a rattlesnake. If it gets real cranky, they strike, they flex, and they actually shoot venom out sometimes. Uh, so let's avoid getting venom on us. Oh, you know my favorite, love Indian Cobras. Even though I got bit by one, I almost died. It's still one of my favorite snakes on the planet. This is actually the crankier of the two Indian Cobras. Uh, my other boy that's really pretty, he's pretty chill. He's nothing like this one. Uh, this is the one Indian Cobra in the group that I had originally that I just said, I'm not rehoming this Indian Cobra. I do not trust anyone having it in their collection. I would be worried that even with a permit, the snake is too sketchy for people to deal with. And you know, there are great handlers out there. I just don't want the responsibility of a crazy ass Cobra being in the hands of somebody that might not be ready for it. Look at that beautiful Indian Cobra. Look at that hood, almost a bluish hue, a bluish hue on the back of that hood right there. Isn't that cool? Wait. Relax, relax. This snake's no joke. Literally bites the glass, flies all over the place. And it's a great sized snake. The one that bit me was a bit bigger than this. And they have kind of like the same charisma. The thing is when a snake gets this big in the wild, they've been through a lot. It's like an adult croc, an old bear. They've been through so much. There's a reason they're still alive. Because they're smart, they're cunning, and they're tough. Okay, relax, relax, relax. Easy, easy, easy. And you see how they reverse on the hook so easily? because they're going in and out of rat burrows in the wild, they need to be able to go into a burrow and reverse with no problem. Yes, 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 cranky snake. Not getting out. Let's clean this poop. You're heavy, buddy. I need to get them a girlfriend, get a nice pretty girl so I can start breeding that species because it's definitely one of my favorites. Doesn't matter if they bite me, I still love them. It's not their fault, it's mine. Gotta clean this. All right, let's put this big boy back. Man, he is really white. This one's super white, and then the other one is like super yellow in coloration with those speckles. That's so crazy. Big boy, big boy. Let me get you. Okay, relax. Let's get you right back inside. Come on. And the interesting thing that I learned about this type of snake is the Indian cobras in northern India, compared to the ones in southern India, have less cytotoxins. So where I was in southern India, and the Sri Lankan Indian cobras, they have more cytotoxic capabilities, which means they eat more away at the flesh with their venom. Uh, so that was why uh, when I cut the circulation off on my finger, it started to eat away a lot, and I could feel that pain a whole bunch. And that's what I learned after I got bit. My buddy in India was like, yes, the southern Indian cobras have much more cytotoxins. And I'm like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> cool. The little green tree monitor is doing good. She's running around, having a good time, eating lots of food, and she actually eats from my fingers. I just don't have any food for her right now. But we're not dealing with the green tree monitor. We're gonna be dealing with Allison the Black Mamba. She's right here. She's been pooping a bunch, been feeding her well, so let's get her out of her enclosure. Just gotta get this key right in there. That's the wrong key, let me get this key right in there. That's the right key, there we go. Hey Allison, I do not have food, so. Don't come at me like that. Nice and easy, baby. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Easy with the black mamba. This is the most dangerous snake on the planet to handle. Uh, even though it doesn't have a, a magnificent giant hood like a king cobra, this animal is fast. This animal has very potent neurotoxic venom, more potent drop for drop than the king cobra. And when they're this size, they can reach anywhere in a split second. So if her tail's in my hand, if she really wanted to, she could shoot up and bite right where the hand is holding her. So, ooh, gotta get her straight into the can. I'm not gonna play any games with her because she doesn't get handled that often. And even though that she was raised in captivity, it does not mean that she's not willing to bite. Same goes for any kind of wild animal. Whew. No big deal, just a giant black mamba. And if it bit me in the nipple, I would die. But we're not doing that today or any day. We're s I'm gonna die of old age. I'm aiming for 103. Let's go. Let's go, baby. 
<laughs> That's a spicy meatball. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I, oh, Christmas came early. It's October. It's not a nightmare. It's a passion of mine. Ramen noodle like usual. Not a surprise, but I love it. What a delight. What a delight that is to pick up poop with your hands because I ran out of gloves. But when have you ever seen me wear gloves? That was for Ryan and Stone because they're soft and they, they like to use <laughs> they like to use PPE and protect themselves while handling deadly snake poop. Sometimes there's fangs in the poop, but whatever. Dude, I just touched my nub. Fuck. Oh, it's my favorite time. Time to take out the jack in the box. It's a giant black mamba. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Please be chill, black mamba. You are so beautiful. And your reputation definitely fits. Oh, hello, beautiful black mamba, Allison. Looking good, looking good. Let's keep her nice and calm. Get her right into the enclosure. She's got fresh water. No more spicy meatballs to worry about. And now she can enjoy herself. She's put on some nice size. And I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe in the next couple months or year, we'll try to breed her. But we're only going to incubate for probably like three eggs because honestly, there's nowhere for black mambas to go. Not even the zoos will use black mambas for display. There's very few zoos out there that would... Ooh, that would want their staff working with black mambas. So just for the experience, I think I'll breed her with Kobe and just get a couple babies, just so we can do it here at CWL. CWW, locked and secured, good to go. Let's go take care of uh, Senor Pepe, the Mexican West Coast rattlesnake, and also Justina, the girl who acts so mean, but she's got the heart of gold. You guys can see that Pepe's going through shed. He just started, so we don't want to mess with him too much. We just want to get him into the can so we can clean that giant spicy meatball right over here on the left. Mamma mia, I just want to use a paper towel for that. All right, so Pepe, don't be too crazy. Okay, Pepe, nice and easy. You got this nice big wide hook, which is great, because Midwest Kongs keeps making these nice, beautiful wide hooks. You just want to get him in a good position. You gotta guide him away, get those heat pits looking the other way, because they have heat seeking pits. So we don't want him to be looking right at us. There we go. Look at that. Huge. Whoa. <laughs> Huge Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. Next time I might use the big King Cobra hook for him because he's getting so massive. He's just such a beast. Look at him. That is a bad ass rattlesnake. Love this guy so much. But one bite and it'll be the worst pain of your life. And I believe this species actually has neurotoxic capabilities too, so it will be a cocktail of nasty, nasty pain and paralysis. So you want to be very careful with a rattlesnake like this. Nice and easy, buddy. He's so big, look at him. He is such a massive animal. Nice and secure. Now what I'm really looking forward to, handling the animal is one thing, but... <laughs> Getting deep in that spicy meatball is what I live for. I'm a little bit Italian. I bet you guys didn't know that. I'm Hungarian. I got a little bit Italian in me, too. Let's do this. Ooh, get the shot. Get the shot. Come on. Can you smell it? Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah. It smells like human poop. It smells like my brother's poop or farts because he eats lots of protein just like this rattlesnake. He doesn't eat rats. He just eats chicken and eggs, and that's all he eats. Yeah. God, just eat them. Not now. You're next. Ugh. Oh, mm, mama, 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 why? All right, we got a nice clean enclosure for Pepe. Let's get him back inside. Hello, Pepe. Wow, he is such a beautiful rattlesnake when he comes out of shed. So he's got this gold on his face right now. Look at that, woo! Big, beautiful rattlesnake. What an awesome animal. And to think that they can get way bigger than this. They can get probably about six plus feet and get thicker than this rattlesnake. Probably about two more times thicker than that. You see the skin starting to break apart. That's why you want to be careful. When a snake's going through shed, it's about to shed its skin. You want to break it up too much. You want that shedding process to be smooth and be in one whole piece, if possible. Now we're going to be dealing with Justina. So for Justina, I'm not wasting time trying to stick her in a can right now because we're not soaking her. And if there's no water, she's just going to be trying to dart out. 
So let's just put the can to the side. I'll put Justina in the center of the ground. In the center of the snake room, I'm gonna get the big snake hook so she's nice and comfortable. So let's go get the mega hook. Come on, let's go get this mega hook. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ah, just like that. Like I'm on Wicked Tuna. Wicked sweet. Wait, how do they talk? Like I'm on Wicked Tuna. I'm gonna go up to that tuna and say, hey, you get in my boat. Get that tuna right into the boat. Oh, Chiba, how can you act like that towards the tuna? I eat tuna. I love tuna. I'm not just an animal lover. I'm, I'm a part of the food chain. I'm a part of the web of life. I like little protein too. I like to eat a little tuna heart when I catch a tuna. I like to... It's wicked. It's wicked sweet. And I don't have to bleep that because I didn't even say the whole way. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Follow me, peeps. Let's go. Like Cardi B says, she wants a king cobra with a hook in it. Cardi B, come to my facility. <laughs> I'll give you a hook. And I'll show you King Cobra. She says that. Wait, I think she means like hook, like the song, like it's the catchiest part of the song. Cardi B, let's collab. I, I think I can spit bars. Comment below. Do you guys think I can spit bars? I think I can spit bars. Justina, you want to meet Cardi B? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justina, nice and easy. She growls. She's cranky. She's Cardi B's spirit animal. She's beautiful. Nice and easy, nice and easy. All right, so I'm just gonna get her out of the enclosure, but when it comes to the kings, I'm definitely sticking to free handling. It just doesn't work out for you. Come on. Nice and easy. Mama. Stay over here. Stay over here. Woo! Nice and easy. So I want her to be right here. She'll hold her ground, because she's not trying to fly away. Once she knows that she's in a position where she's surrounded. No, she's good. She usually stays right there, and I do a lot of cleanings just like this when I don't have guests in the room, obviously. We just have other people work with animals, so it's nice and professional. Look at that beautiful girl. She's nothing like Kevin. Always mouth open, tongue flaring, and growling. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, she is a beast of a King Cobra. Nice and easy, Mom, I got clean. You just stay right there, relax. Don't mind me. Break up the concrete she laid for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that digested snake. And you know, some people out there will try to feed their snakes, their king cobras, rodents, and uh, you know, you can get away with it for a long time, but the reality of it is, king cobras are designed to eat snakes, lizards, uh, really nothing else. So you don't really observe them in the wild ever eating mammals. It's just a type of animal that's truly designed to process the meat of a reptile. It's more like lean like fish. And uh, because it's lean like fish, when they go to the bathroom, it's disgusting. It's just diarrhea, basically. But it's healthy diarrhea. I know. What's healthy diarrhea? Ask your king cobra. She's looking like, don't miss anything. I won't. I'm sorry. Don't bite me again. Would you like me to clean it like this? Can I get you any uh, water while you wait for your apartment windows to be clean? Would you like a magazine to read? Maybe a Bob Python magazine? Hmm? Your favorite thing? No? <laughs> She's looking at the baby cobras. Don't look at the baby monocle cobras. This they're, is not for you. Look, they're like, mama, mama. No, they're not saying mama. They're saying <laughs> nothing like fresh diarrhea cake onto the glass. It's my favorite part to clean. Thank you so much for the privilege of cleaning your shit. Really, there's nothing I'd rather do but clean our shit, Justina. Nothing like a beautiful King Cobra to share time with. Yes, I did touch some fecal matter with his hand and I fixed my hair, but if you've seen the videos before, it's a common occurrence. All right, sweet mama, sweet baby, sweet, sweet girl, let's go. All right. And one, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Five, six, seven, eight. Please do not fight me. That's great. <laughs> Justina. Easy. Easy. Watch the nub. Nice and easy, baby. Ooh, nice and easy. Right back in there. Get the big piece of spaghetti inside the cage. And I'm really working on getting her a bigger setup. I hate keeping her in this fishing cage. She's outgrown it. 
trying to get her like a 14 foot long, four foot deep enclosure that's about four to five feet tall. So we'll see where we're gonna be able to get it from soon enough. Soon enough, we, we, uh, this is so much I'm trying to get done. Survival, then projects, then keep surviving, then more projects. Beautiful Gila Monsters. And just in time for October, Halloween, ghouls and goblins. Don't forget, Scales Expo coming up 21st and 22nd. I'll be there with all my homie G's. And then we got the beautiful boy. What are you doing? Come here, you fat boy. You've been eating too much candy. You've been eating, oh. What's going on, big boy? Beautiful Gila Monsters, venomous lizards from Arizona and New Mexico related to the beaded lizards found in Central America. These guys are venomous. Their venom can't kill you but their venom will make you feel agonizing pain for several days up to a week. So you would not want to take a bite from a Gila monster. And they got these beautiful bulging heads and these are muscles to chomp down, not venom glands. But what's interesting is their skull itself actually has bumps. So these are not osteoderms like the bones of a crocodile. They got osteoderms going down here. On the skull itself, it's literally bone sticking out. So if you ever look up a photo of the skull of the Gila monster, you can see that firsthand. Look how beautiful they are. I love my Gila monsters. These guys are like, I think they're like around 13 years old now. They're very old and they live a very long time. Lizards in captivity, depending on the species, some can live to be 40, 50, even 60 plus years old with proper care. And they got these beautiful fat tails like leopard geckos, which is kind of like a distraction with a predator. So if a coyote or bobcat bites that tail, they can whip around and bite that animal in the snout, delivering that nasty venom, which is a deterrent for predators and also helps bring down that prey they eat like little pinky mice and quail chicks. But typically they're gonna be eating like quail eggs. So that's the only thing they're gonna be a monster too, even though they're so beautiful and venomous and they seem so crazy, but they're not. They sometimes fight over food, but at the same time, They've been lovers before and she's laid eggs in the past, but sadly those eggs didn't do well with the previous owner. I'm sorry, I was just trying to help you. Um, I'm gonna clean out some poop while you guys enjoy these beautiful gilas. They need to be put on a diet, I know. <laughs> they, uh, they're looking real thick and chunky. Hey, Jeff, what's up, man? All right, beautiful people, I'm gonna put these Gila monsters back. That's gonna be it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and always follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you love. Also, I'll see you guys at the Scales Expo this month, and a happy Halloween. And maybe in the next episode, I'll be dressed like a vampire and we'll be playing with pumpkins with all the animals. Who knows, comment below. Do you wanna see that? I wanna see that. Let me just get you guys back. <laughs> Close this up, make sure it's nice and secure, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>